To get your camera out of automatic mode, it's necessary to understand the three critical exposure variables. These are aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. Today we're going to cover shutter speed and figure out where to set it for the best effect underwater. Think of the camera's shutter like a set of shutters on a window that open and close. When the shutters are open, they let light into the sensor. And when the shutters are closed, it's dark and the exposure stops. The amount of time the shutter is left open to expose the image is referred to as shutter speed. We refer to shutter speed in seconds and most often fractions of a second. Different cameras have different shutter speed ranges and they vary. Most of this range is not very usable underwater. On the slow end of shutter speeds, a 60th of a second is the common lower limit for handheld photography. At these slower shutter speeds, small movements of the camera will start to distort your image. Fast moving subjects will also have a trail of motion blur behind them. So we're looking for a sweet spot. The metadata from thousands of published underwater images will show that shutter speeds between 125th and 160th of a second will work well about 90% of the time underwater. These speeds are fast enough to prevent motion blur from the camera movement, as well as the movements of most animals as long as they're in a relaxed state. Typically, I'll start with a shutter at 160th and leave it at that setting until I need extra reach in my aperture range. At the faster end, you'll dramatically limit the amount of light that hits your sensor. So if you go from 125th of a second to a 250th, your shutter is only open half as long. You will have lost what we call one stop of light. Now, if you've seen my aperture tutorial, you will have already heard about the idea of stops. When we gain a stop, the amount of light has doubled. When we lose a stop, the amount of light has been cut in half. When you lose light by shooting a faster shutter speed, you'll need to make up this light by using a larger aperture or a higher ISO. When shooting in dark environments like cenotes and caverns, it'll be a balancing act between the ISO and the shutter speed to get defined environments and sharp light rays without too much graininess or blur. Another way to add light to your subject is using strobes. No matter how fast your shutter is moving, your strobes are typically firing only a fraction of the time the camera is actually capturing the image. So your strobes will help to freeze the motion of your subject. Um, underwater, even at reasonable shutter speeds of 125th or 160th of a second, the flash will freeze the action. But your camera has a limit at which your strobes can sync with it. The limit is caused by the shutter mechanism. I'll save the explanation of this phenomena for another video on shutter sync, but suffice it to say that your camera will have a maximum shutter speed for use with a flash. And that's typically around a 200 or a 250th of a second. The fastest shutter sync on the market right now would be the Sony A1, which will sync at a speed of a 400th of a second. There's a few situations underwater where even faster shutter speeds are necessary. The most obvious is a fast moving subject. When I have a pod of dolphins swimming around me or past me, I'll be using a minimum of a 500th of a second and often 640th, 800th, or even faster to stop the motion of these fast animals. Don't even bother with strobes. Animals like wild dolphins are typically swimming more than an arm's reach away, so your flash isn't gonna be effective anyway. Ditching the strobes, will also make it a lot easier to maneuver yourself through the water. You'll basically be faster. Something that moves even faster than dolphins is light, making fast shutter speeds effective when you want to capture dramatic light rays. If you're shooting a lot at the surface of the water, faster shutter speeds will also help keep the water line sharp on over under shots where half of the frame is out of the water. A slower shutter speed, on the other hand, will make it look like the sky is melting into the sea. Shutter speed is your best tool for creating a sense of movement. Slower shutter speeds can bring a softness to your image or capture deliberate motion blur. When you combine a strobe flash with deliberate panning or spinning of the camera, slow shutter speeds can be used to highlight a particular portion of the frame. Slow shutter speeds with flash require rear curtain sync to stop the subject in a pleasing manner. 
iFly TTL circuitry automatically switches to rear curtain sync at slow shutter speeds for this reason. Everyone's portfolio is different. For me, the very slow or very fast shots represent less than 10% of my catalog. Shutter speed is important to my underwater photography, but I don't overthink it. A good rule of thumb is to start with your shutter speed at 160th of a second and adjust your aperture as necessary. Go faster if it's super bright out or you see that pot of dolphins about to swim by. If you want some free one-on-one -on -one help with your photos, send some examples to us at ikelight at ikelight.com. Until then, happy shooting.